worked out really well. I ended up coming in just uh, in November, just after a very short period, we, we got me signed up and over on board. It's amazing. Just, you know, when I first got here, it was really just a shell. I remember, you know, the first impression I had, actually the building wasn't even sealed up at that point. You know, the front, front was still open, there was scaffolding there, and there was a lot of plastic trying to keep the rain out and so forth. Um, and to see it magically transformed, you know, over the last several months into, you know, the gem that it's becoming. It's really, it's pretty amazing. At the end of the project in terms of its construction, just the, uh, you know, the last, you know, month or two has been just phenomenal with the seats going in and then all the really fine finishing details. It's really coming together nicely. One of the interesting things about the Gallo Center is that it is this public-private partnership. The, it's actually the facility is owned by the county. Um, Although a lot of the fundraising was done in the community and money to actually construct the building was then given to the county to finish it. Um, but the actual operations are through a nonprofit organization, the Gallo Center for the Arts. And yes, I oversee the Gallo Center for the Arts and all the different parts of that, that um, organization. That includes the programming, um, you know, the actual operations of the theater, the fundraising for it. So there's, there's a lot of different components to that organization. The capital side, we've done a really good job um, of raising, you know, funds. The County of Stanislaus had, you know, donated uh, the land at two and a half million dollars and then there was another twelve and a half million dollars in cash towards the project. And then the community, in addition to the original fifteen million dollar endowment that was, you know, part of the project to be raised, has actually raised what I think we're now about another 25 million towards the project. So we've done a phenomenal job of fundraising on this project, but we still have a little more ways to go on the main capital project. Um, so we're working on getting that that all wrapped up. That's something that's going to take take some time to work through. One of the things we're hoping is that when people actually get inside and get, actually see what's being built with the money, then that'll help with that actual you know the capital fundraising that we have yet to go. And then in addition to you know, the, the initial construction project, there is, has always been a need for ongoing fundraising to support the operations. Um, that's to help us keep the ticket prices low. It's, it's actually kind of tied in with the actual building itself in terms of its size. We wanted to have a nice intimate theater size. That, that really required us to plan to do ongoing fundraising. And that's what the original idea about the endowment was also, to help provide some operating support to make the whole, whole boat float. The toughest part has actually just been the time compression. You know, ideally, if I could have come on board um, you know, even several months earlier, that would have been, been a little bit easier. Um, but just it's the way things worked out. I, I wasn't actually here until November, not really full time on board until uh, January. Um, and we had a lot to do in that time period. Um, we needed to get our, our fundraising back on track, but I think probably the most important thing was to get the programming in place for this inaugural year. And so that's why I've spent a lot of my time doing is getting that opening week set up. I think we're really happy how that's turned out and also programming the rest of the season, getting the schedule set up with the, uh, with the local resident companies and then, you know, working to de develop the staff. We've, we've had a number of new staff come on board. We still have more staff to go. Um, so uh, just all these different pieces coming together. What's been great is having the, the county uh, as a project team on the actual construction. And they've really, you know, taken the bull by the horns. Patty Hill Thomas is just an amazing woman. Um, and I can't say enough about her to really just make this project come to fruition in a really wonderful way. She has a great project team. She's working on it. And the staff here that we have are just outstanding. Um, Scott McKay is our, our production manager. He's been taking care of all the technical aspects of the theater. Um, Al Polis is our, in charge of all our IT infrastructure. We just got our phones in, our computers into the center. But he's also been working on the ticketing system for us. Um, and then John Tershawn is amazing. He's, he's in charge of actually operating the ticket office and getting our front of house staff together. They'll be the usher teams. All the volunteers now, we have you know, around 1,000 volunteers working on this project. And he's been the man really making that all happen. Um, really, you know, it's been a great team to work with. We've got an all-star lineup. It's, it's really amazing. Um, 
I think, you know, of course, probably the biggest name is Tony Bennett, although it depends on who you talk to about that. But certainly in terms of the response right off the bat to ticket sales, Tony Bennett was, you know, by far just huge demand. We were overwhelmed the first day when we put tickets on sale for that. Um, but the entire week is, is pretty amazing. Uh, we really wanted to uh, feature the, the Modesto Symphony Orchestra in our first performance. So we partnered them up with uh, Broadway star Patti Lapone, and she's just fantastic, and uh, we think it's going to be a great concert. One of the reasons we chose her, she's the original Vita on Broadway. She won the Tony Award for her performance of Evita, and one of our Broadway musicals this year is Evita. Also, this summer she starred in Gypsy in New York City, and they just had fantastic rave reviews. And we also have Gypsy on our season this summer. So it just seemed like the perfect fit to kind of highlight some of the Broadway things that we have coming up during the year. Um, but that's just opening night. <laughs> we have, uh, on the second night, we have Los Tigres del Norte, which is this uh, Nortenia band. They actually are, the, I guess you could call them the grandfathers of the Nortenia band sound. They got the whole movement started and are now known around the world for their music. You know, people buy their albums all over the world. And it's actually very unusual to be able to see that band perform in this size venue. Um, but they really wanted to be part of it. They, they grew up and um, developed their, their band in San Jose. So they're familiar with this region. And they really wanted to be part of, of the opening celebration here. So we were able to work it out to have them here. And then, of course, Tony Bennett on Saturday. And then Roseanne, Roseanne Cash is Johnny Cash's daughter. And she has this wonderful uh, show she's put together. It's based on a CD she did called The Black Cadillac. And it was really looking back at her family and its history, um, and also just life in general. You know, she lost her parents within just a very short time period there. And she took some time to go back and look at that. And what's interesting about that show is, is that when you, well, it's looking back at the Cash family and their part of you know Americana, American history. It's it's really also kind of telling the history of America told through their their family story. So I think that's the people I've talked to who have seen the show say it's amazing. I think that's going to be a really fantastic evening. And then winding up that week, uh, we have the Joffrey Ballet, um, which you know, the board felt very strongly that they wanted to have dance uh, represented and. Who better than the Joffrey Ballet, which is just one of the top ballet com uh, companies in the world. And they're going to be right here in Modesto. We were able to arrange to have them come in on a Tuesday night. And then we also really wanted to have um, a component for families. And we have this kind of Cirque du Soleil kind of show. It's called Birdhouse Factory, originated by the Pickle Family Circus in San, San Francisco. But it kind of took on its own life and has actually been touring around the United States now. Um, and I think people are really going to be um, in love with that show. Actually, the initial sales, we have a, a tremendous response for that show as well. And that's going to be happening in the smaller um, Foster Family Theater, which is just 444 seats. And so it's going to be an amazing place to see, really up close, some amazing modern, contemporary circ and performance artwork. We have actually a very sophisticated ticketing system, which is already in place. And it's um, handling our, our sales right now for us and the tracking of the tickets. But what's about to come is really amazing. Uh, we will have online sales coming shortly on the internet. And what's going to be great about that is you're going to be able to actually go, you know, read about a show, get into the actual um, you know, buying of the tickets. But when you buy the tickets, you're actually going to be able to drill down and choose your seats inside the theater where you want to sit. Um, so I think people are really going to like that online component to it. You know, I think one of the things about the center, you know, it's been at the root of, you know, the core of this project, I think, from the very beginning, is the intent that this center really is to be for everyone in this community. And I think, hopefully, you see that reflected in our programming. It's very diverse. There's all different kinds of artistic disciplines represented, all different kinds of cultures, uh, programs for different ages, from little kids, you know, up to seniors, um, and everyone in between, really kids of all ages. Um, so I think what we're really hoping is that people will feel comfortable coming down to the Gala Center. We've tried to price the seats uh, affordably. There's actually on almost every, well, every show, there's a pretty wide range of ticket prices. And the reality is every seat in both theaters are, are good seats. You know, even in the larger theater, there's no seat further than 100 feet from the stage. So what we really are hoping is that the community will come out 
experience the center and just fall in love with it and want to just keep coming back for more and more. And we'd also love to hear from people in the community about the kinds of shows and the artists that they would like to have perform on the stage. And also we'd like to see the community on the stage in the future. That's why we've put so much emphasis on our resident companies. And we're also starting to work more with a lot of smaller community groups um, who can put performances together to go on those stages. So we really just want this to be the center, in the center of the community, the Gallo Center.